Ooh, baby, we did another deep dive. And this time we're getting into consumables, specifically saw blades. Consumables like sandpaper, router bits, and saw blades are one of the biggest things that you can control the cost of in your business. When you buy a tool, you've made a choice and that is a fixed cost that will not change until you replace it. However, consumables can make a massive difference in the cost of a project that you're selling or just one you're building for pleasure ladies, gents. We'll take a look at how to do a self-inspection of your saw blade to see if it's dull, common causes of that dullness, and then we're going to look at the cost of ownership between a cheap blade versus a high quality blade. And then in a second video, we're going to take a field trip next week to a saw blade sharpening shop. I had a bunch of epiphany moments, things that I thought I understood about saw blades, but until I actually saw them happen, I didn't really get. And so it was so cool to see that happen because it just made a big difference in my understanding. Professional saw shops have load meters on their saws, which means the user can tell when the blade needs to be sharpened because the resistance will go up and it's very easy to tell. They go through blades daily. Uh, in fact, a lot of them change them every shift, but we don't have that. So we need to learn how to do a self-inspection. Once you learn how to do it, it should only take you about 30 seconds. It's very easy to do. I'm about to give you a lot of info, but the key point here is one problem means there's an entire problem and it needs to go for sharpening. Some common indications that you need to inspect your blade are like burning and scorching on your wood, chip out in plywood. It can be really hard to feed the board or the cuts really seem to get louder. Like you just notice something's different. Now you've heard me say in the past that pitch buildup can be the number one cause of pre mature uh, dullness in blades. And I typically use Simple Green or CMT as this good stuff for cleaning blades, but that's not what you want to do for an inspection. Because if it does need to be sharpened, you're going to send it off anyways, and they're going to do a way better job cleaning your blade than you ever would. So when you go into an inspection, good lighting is key. It's important to either go outside or have a lamp that you can sort of move around and cause different angles of light. Or one thing that was sort of a duh moment for me when we were researching this video that someone recommended is a jeweler's loop. Now I bought this one on Amazon. I got two of them for 12 bucks, I think. I'll link it down below. And not only is it great for looking at blades, but I found a lot of uses for it in the shop. So real cheap, good to have around. What are we looking for? We're looking for rounded and broken teeth. Now this is what typical wear on a blade looks like. This is a dull tooth. Why? Because just the corners impact the cutting surface. This was super interesting to me when we were doing this video to find out that because of the angular geometry of a tooth, there's a slight gap in there where only the very, very tip is contacting the wood. Now, this is another example of normal wear. You can see not only is the tooth rounded and the edge is a little rounded, but there's impact chips. That can be caused by buildup of sawdust in there uh, or it contacting something strange inside the wood, but little impact chips are no big deal. It's that amount of material is going to easily come off during a sharpening. In fact, when we went and got our blades sharpened, there was some chips in there that I couldn't even see with the naked eye that they found in the rotoscope or the microscope, whatever they called it. It was really cool to see like, oh my gosh, there's a little chip in there and that definitely affects cut quality. It was really cool to find out after a year though that my blades were in phenomenal condition and that, you know, just a minor sharpening was needed. So let's talk about broken teeth. Now you found some rounded over teeth, that's fine. Uh, you know, I've seen people, you can get by for a few weeks before sending it off. It's not like a must stop now and send it to be sharpened, but broken teeth are a non-starter. When you look at this picture here, you can see why. Basically, when you have one broken tooth, when you get to that area of the saw blade, it is, instead of every other tooth, it is four teeth before you come in contact with the area that needs to be cut. Now, this means that not only is that tooth entering at the wrong angle, but it's crashing into and removing way more material than is necessary. When you look at flat top grind or chamfered roughing teeth, a broken tooth is going to have the same effect. It's sort of like a sine wave. You know, you have the up and down motion of a sine wave, but when you remove one of those humps, then you create problems. And broken teeth will cause more broken teeth because then they are operating in a way that they're not supposed to. Here's three levels of broken teeth. First one here is a small chip that will probably come away with a regular sharpening. Maybe it'll be a couple passes, but when you sharpen, you need to take down to the lowest tooth. So when you get into this bigger chip here, this is where you start getting into a situation where you probably want to replace that tooth because you don't want to grind away so much of your saw blade that you're wasting sharpening. So the additional $6 cost of replacing one tooth and it's $3 for each additional tooth is going to be offset by the fact that you don't have to replace your blade sooner. Now here is what a fully broken tooth looks like. Now, of course, that's a clip from our saw stop video when we exploded a dado stack with a brake cartridge. But when you look at a 10 inch blade, a normal broken tooth looks like this. That obviously definitely needs to be replaced. And both of these are a good reminder of why you should always wear safety glasses. You don't want those flying off and hitting you in the face. So let's say that you looked at your whole blade and you didn't find any of these problems. 
but you're still having a bad cut. Uh, let's talk about some very rare occurrences, but you know they can happen and we'll talk about ways to mitigate those. Other common causes of poor cut quality can be run out or a bent tooth, and then very, very rarely a loss of tension, which is almost non-existent in modern 10 inch blades, but we will talk about it because it's super cool. Now, run out or a bent tooth means that some portion of your saw blade sticks out further than it normally does. The, this can easily be solved by a two-part inspection. So first you wanna look at the drive side of your arbor. That is the side on the motor and not where you screw the nut on. And what you wanna look for is obstructions there because that is what keeps your blade square to the saw. And if there's any foreign material like buildup of sawdust that is keeping it from sitting flat against that plate, you need to clean that and make sure that the blade can sit flat against that when you tighten the nut. The next test is a great way to look for a bent tooth uh, or any wobble in your blade. If your arbor's clean, what you can do is turn on your saw blade so that it runs up to speed and then turn it off. Now you wanna maybe put something, make sure there's a, a flat background behind it, maybe something white or something easy to see. And then as the blade slows down, you wanna sight directly down it and look for any wobble or imperfections in that blade. You will see, if you have a problem, it is very easy to tell. The other way to tell if you have a problem is by just cutting a piece of wood and it's better to do a rip cut because that'll give you a longer sample size. But what you'll see, we talked about that frequency because teeth are alternating their cut pattern. You may see a common pattern of a deeper gouge or a problem within that board. If that's something you find, you may not be able to diagnose exactly what the problem is, but it is helpful to send a sample cut to your saw shop so that they can take a look at it. They don't have the ability to use your blade in their saw shop, but if they see a, a sample of what the problem is, they may be able to diagnose the problem. Another really cool thing I learned during the research for this video is about blade tension. You know, blades aren't flat. It's unmeasurable in a 10 inch blade like you couldn't really see it. But when you get a really big blade like this 32 inch blade, you can hold it on a bench and you'll see it sort of flop in the middle. The reason for this is when it spins up to speed, the outside actually expands a little bit because it's moving so much faster than the inside. And if blades were perfectly dead flat without any tension in them, they would wobble and vibrate really, really badly. So some of the best blades on the market are still hand hammered and what they have to do is hammer them in very specific orientation with a hammer like you see in this picture. It forces the blade to have tension in the right direction. Blades like the CMT blades, they are tensioned using a very, very powerful roller. In fact, you can see this line right here in the CMT blade is called the tension ring. And that's what keeps the blade flat when it gets up to speed. That tension holds it in place and I just thought that was just a really, really cool fact. Now losing tension in a modern blade blade is almost unheard of. If you're for some reason using giant, giant blades, it does happen. It can happen in metal cutting blades more often than wood cutting blades. But I just thought that was just one of the coolest facts. So we've gone over ad nauseum how to inspect a blade. And now something that should in theory take you 30 seconds, probably took me 10 minutes to explain. But that's why we do these deep dives so you can get all the information and apply it in your shop. Let's talk about the economics, the most important part. First of all, what does sharpening cost? Typically sharpening, depending you know, what your community is like and the cost of living is gonna be 10 to $20 to sharpen. The more teeth a blade has, like a crosscut blade is gonna be on the higher end of the spectrum and the less teeth a blade has, like a rip blade, it's gonna be on the lower end of the spectrum. When it comes to replacing teeth, they're typically about $6 for the first tooth and $3 for each additional tooth. When you get into heavy grinds, if you have a big chip and you have to do multiple passes, there can be a heavy grind charge, uh, that can be two to $10. If you get on the $10 side, you probably should have replaced that tooth anyway, so let's call it two to five bucks for a heavy grind. Now, cheap blades are a no-brainer to me. They either have no carbide or just a little bit. They get dull fast. Any amount of heat is gonna ruin them, and the cost of sending them off and getting them sharpened is more than the blade itself. You have to replace them more often than you would get a mid-grade or a high-grade sharpened, so it's just don't buy cheap blades. Unless you're stuck and you gotta run to Home Depot and that's your only option, don't buy one. So let's talk about mid-quality blades, and I know there's a lot of people that are fans of Freud and Diablo, but I consider them to be a mid-quality blade. I've always said that, and due to my research for this video, I know it to be true. We talked about seven saw shop owners and people that work for them, and they all said the same thing, which is their carbide is smaller, their technique for welding the teeth on is inferior, which means they break a lot more teeth. The paint can become a problem uh, when you're trying to fix them. 
and they get about two to four sharpenings per blade. So if you look at the average cost, and I'm not including shipping here because that can vary wildly depending on how many blades you ship in. Obviously the cost per blade is less the more you send in, but let's say the average cost is $17.50 per blade. And if you get three sharpenings out of a Freud blade, that means the average cost of ownership is $29 per use of a Freud blade. So that's already cheaper than a $30, $35 blade. So it's a good choice, nothing wrong with them. But let's talk about the cost of ownership of a high quality blade. Now in the research for our video, these were identified as the CMT Chromium, which I've been using for the last year before I had to get them sharpened, which I love, as well as Forest. Now the reason these are considered high quality blades is the size of their carbide, as well as how the teeth are brazed on. They have a superior method for brazing on the teeth. So let's take a look at CMT Chromium. Mike's still offering that 10% discount code that he did when we launched a year ago. So that'll be down in the pinned comment. With my discount, that's $52 for the rip cut, $58 for the general purpose, and $67 for the cross cut. Now because of the huge amount of carbide they put on there, there's gonna be 10 to 15 sharpenings per blade. If it takes me a year between sharpenings, that's over a decade of use, which is already impressive. A decade, I don't have to think about a blade. Now, when you look at that $17.50 average cost per sharpening, rip comes out to $19.96 per use at an average of 13 sharpening. So that's 14 uses. General purpose, $20.39 and cross cut $21. So you can already see that's almost $10 less than a mid-grade blade and certainly like almost 20 bucks less than a cheap, cheap, cheap bargain store blade that we wouldn't even consider as woodworkers. When you look at forest blades, same thing. High quality brazing and the large amount of carbide, 10 to 15 sharpenings. But the, the problem is those are three times the cost. And I, as someone who's used both extensively, I've never seen a difference in cut quality. So very high quality blades, not saying anything bad about their performance or the way that they're made, but you know, two to three times the cost per use of something like the Chromium. What is the point I'm trying to make? It's buy once, cry once. I say it, I've been saying it for years and it doesn't matter more than in consumables. Whether it's saw blades, router bits, or sandpaper, higher quality actually saves you money in the long run and it increases your enjoyment and quality of work. So I hope that you got value out of this. We worked really hard on it. If you want to send your blade somewhere, I'll leave the place that we went. Uh, if you're on the Western half of the United States, it's probably a great place to send it. If you're on the East Coast, it's just too much shipping. I'm gonna link some other videos down below that you should watch about saw blades. We got some really cool slow motion clips and some other great information about how saw blades work. If you wanna get the CMT blades, they are linked in the pinned comment along with the discount code. And we're gonna do another deep dive coming up into saw blade and router bit coatings. And it's really exciting. If there's something you'd like us to deep dive into, put it down in the comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cats Moses store, pick up a dovetail jig, a stop block or an apron. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.